Welcome to Insights for Manufacturing, a podcast that supports the UK manufacturing sector. Hosted by Jeff Beecham, the manufacturer's recruiter. Hello and welcome to Insights for Manufacturing. I'm delighted to welcome my guest today, Mark Weymouth. And Mark is the Managing Director of Plus Automation and also probably familiar to a lot of our listeners and viewers as the compiler of the Friday Good News Post on LinkedIn that uh, showcases positive news from UK manufacturing. So on today's special show, which is actually the 50th episode, welcome to Insights for Manufacturing, Mark. Thanks, Jeff, and welcome to everybody else, if you can say such a corny thing to a Zoom camera. (laughs) Absolutely, absolutely. So it's good to have you on the show, Mark. We, we've spoken about this for some time, and I have to say we will get your your good news post bright and early on a Friday morning with all of the, the sort of roundup, if you like, of of what's going on in UK manufacturing. So can you can you start by you know just telling our listeners about your background and, and how you got involved in in manufacturing to begin with? Okay, well, I'm slightly older than 50, despite it being the 50th episode. So I started out as an electronic engineer. Uh, yep. It's what I always wanted to be. I started out in electronics for aerospace company, everything I wanted to be until I got there and discovered that I didn't want to be surrounded by boring electronic engineers in an aerospace industry, <laughs> changing nothing. Uh, and I count my blessings every time I'm on a, I'm on a plane. So yeah. I quickly moved across to commercial and project management roles and spent the first half of my career really for first 15 years in tier one automotive with uh, those great English manufacturing companies. I uh, started out with Lucas and then TI Group. Yep. I to get a bit more international working for Alcan. And as I say, spent 15 years getting into all sorts of trouble and all sorts of fun in automotive tier one. Second half of the career was a change to predominantly family owned overseas businesses and I spent the last 15 years in factory automation or a little bit over 15 years in factory automation because the last 15 have been in sensors so 30 something years in manufacturing always serving and dependent on UK manufacturing and I guess if I was to say anything I'm an engineer at heart and I'm fascinated by manufacturing absolutely and so you know what a what a wealth of experience you you've uh you've been in some of the the toughest environments, automotive and aerospace, probably, you know, right up there amongst, uh, you know, some of the tough sectors within manufacturing. And, and so since then, you've had this this love of industrial automation and and more recently, I guess, your your expertise and your your day job with Plus Automation is, is all around sensors. Um, so your Friday good, good news roundup has been running for over two years now. So what what was your inspiration behind that in the first place? And, you know, what, what did you hope to, you know, achieve through it? And I guess like most overnight successes, it took a lot of nights. So it's actually been running nearly <laughs> four years. Uh, oh, has it been that long? It, Crikey. It, it has indeed. I started it in January 2020, which is notable uh, because it was the time of Brexit. And all yes. the doom and gloom about uh, before Brexit was going to be kicked off and uh, pushed on to us and I was I guess if I was to name a night an event it was having quite a lot of beers with Chris Greeno and <laughs> as always talking about why isn't UK manufacturing visible enough why don't we appeal to kids how do we appeal to kids if it's a hidden thing yeah I've always believed that you can't really criticize something you haven't tried to change yourself so I can't be too critical of this situation unless I don't do something but what on earth can I do and out of that really came the Friday good news. It was started as my way of trying to share some positivity, primarily to counter all the doom and gloom that was about because of Brexit. Yeah. Um, th- that was January 2020. Something else came along that took our mind off Brexit, which was COVID. So it very quickly turned into the, oh, my goodness, we need something positive to get us over, distract us for a few minutes from this horrible thing that was happening to us. So, um it turned into a bit of a distraction from COVID, I guess. And around the same time, I noticed a lot of unpleasantness and some of the nastier side of social media maybe mm. creeping into LinkedIn. So that's why it's got a section dedicated to sort of diversity and trying to shout and be a bit of a cheerleader for that side as well, because A, I don't agree with it, and B, I didn't like it creeping into, you know, LinkedIn is meant to be a professional 
thing where we talk about what we really think, not a couple of 14 year old kids saying stupid things. So uh, I say it was to create a bit of positivity and share some good news and share some news about good things. And that's what I felt I could do with uh, trying to promote a pro diversity campaign. Yeah. And I guess after Brexit and and COVID, we've sort of, well, we've, we've, we've got through those things in the main, but we're still left with our ugly mainstream media, aren't we? So, uh, you know, there is still an ongoing need for your Friday good news uh, post. Hey, on a Friday, it cheers people up. That's the most important thing. I like to think that if it's anything to help people finish on a bit of a high, then great. We all go up. After work on a Friday, we go back to our families. We need to smile and be nice people. Absolutely. So I guess it takes quite a lot of time for you to, you know, to create the, you know, the weekly roundup. It's quite a commitment. Uh, have you got a, a sort of set process for, uh, you know, curating and compiling these these positive stories that are related to UK manufacturing? Yes, I've got a lot of tabs saved. So um, the process <laughs> really doesn't happen to a Thursday. Uh, there's around 15 or so websites that are saved that I scour. There's yep. a couple of other news collator websites and the manufacturer magazine, which I think deserves a shout out for being a source of intelligent and balanced news. That yeah, you know, yes, that means it does good and bad news, but at least it does both. Uh, that has a daily news collection. So I go through probably. And a good week, I might end up with 50 or 60 stories open on my screen and yep. I apply my editorial control. And my editorial control is totally unbalanced. It has to be positive and it has to interest me or I think it'll interest others. Yeah. The good bit is I get to read an awful lot of things on a Thursday. The bad bit is I then have to cut and paste them, create shortcuts, create the images and go to sleep because that's pretty much my Thursday. Yeah. yeah. My Thursday evening. And all of this is alongside your your day job as well. So, you know, it really has been a, a commitment over and above what you do to make a living. And this is something that you do every week for the benefit of the UK manufacturing sector. So, you know, that that's gotta be applauded. Have, have you got any have you got any favorite or, or or you know, particularly memorable news stories over that period that that really stand out to you? I mean, you know, there've been some huge projects you know taking off you know some really really good news is is there anything in particular that stands out to you that that was you know really special or or impactful uh, i think the ones that really stand out but maybe just because they were in the early days was there was almost hysteria about elon musk coming to the uk back in early summer 2000 yes. i think uh, and that sticks with me because that was probably the first thing that I put out that got a lot of pickup on LinkedIn and made me think, oh, actually, I can reach beyond maybe my peer group. Yep. Um, so I remember that. I obviously, similar sort of time was British Vault. Arrival was probably before that, the electric van with a modular yes. manufacturing methodology. So British Vault and Arrival, amazing stories, which I would have loved to have seen lots of success on. Um, so they're probably the most memorable. I think if I look back from this end of four years, looking back on it, there maybe isn't anything that really stands out as the wow, wow, wow. But what really does stick with me is she talking about across that period of time, goodness, I don't know, thousands of jobs announced, absolutely millions of pounds of investment in boring old manufacturing it doesn't get reported it barely got reported yeah and i don't believe the vast majority of the uk population has any idea how many people have good livelihoods because of it and started on maybe after the doom and gloom of covid and all these things new manufacturing jobs i like reporting them because i think hey this is probably somebody having a step up they're getting on a better career they're getting on a better wage a bit more stability and I honestly think a lot of these announcements of good manufacturing jobs, it's changing people's lives. So if I look back, there have been many, many, many thousands of them. So there's a lot yeah. of life changing things happened for people. Yeah, absolutely. And also, uh, you know, you were talking about, you know, thousands and thousands of jobs being created. I guess the actual numbers of people that have read those posts and read those stories equally you know there there could be thousands and thousands of individuals that you know 
some of them are probably already in jobs, but maybe in not such a rosy situation and, you know, picking up on all this exterior doom and gloom we've got within the, within the country in general, um, impacting people's lives, you know, with, with a, with a positive story, particularly about the sector that we all love. I, th I think you're probably having that weekly impact as well, aren't you? I mean, it certainly impacts my week in a, in a, in a, in a small way, sometimes in a big way, you know, um, everything's not always fine and rosy in my world. I, I'm human after all. And, you know, sometimes reading those good stories, even if I'm having a, you know, not so great a day, uh, I take some comfort in the fact that, you know, wonderful things are happening for other people within the sector. So yeah, what, what an impact is creating It's that ripple effect, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it typically gets, I guess somewhere between around four and eight thousand people read it each week. Yeah, uh, that's reported to me. I don't know how many people read it because it's been shared. So I hope much further. Uh, yes. And so that also gives a bit of a position to put up at things like um, initiatives like women in manufacturing. We try and give a bit of a voice to those as well as yes. to share a bit of positivity. So uh, yeah, it's, it's good certainly stuff. good. Um, and the comments that people give back encourages LinkedIn to share it which is why I solicit the uh, comments and support to people but it does help energize me sometimes those Thursday nights can be very long and tiring so at least on a Friday I get a bit of a pickup from it and that helps me do it yeah absolutely well I'm sure we're all very very grateful for your for your efforts Mark so turning to the the, the sort of current state of UK manufacturing what uh, have there been any trends in particular that you've seen in the industry recently you know in terms of you know key challenges or or opportunities um especially on the sme side i guess the biggest opportunity going forward that i'm seeing is that bigger investment in apprenticeships both as a topic and business is doing it and uh, i'm sure it's some corny song but you know apprenticeships kids are the future so if you yes. manufacturing is going to stand a chance then that's the thing I probably take most heart from. Challenges, disappointment, I guess, the postcode lottery that is accessing support and information and the confusion about what is out there is probably my biggest generic uh, concern <clears throat> for industry. Um, yeah. Closer to home, yeah, it, obviously it worries me. There's a, the UK has a real poor adoption rate for robotics, which is well reported, but also that follows through into automation. My livelihood is connected with automation. So uh, yes. both as a supporter of UK manufacturing and as a supporter of my family, I'd like more automation. <laughs> um, yeah. The challenges, you mentioned SMEs, the challenges I think are SMEs just have so much to do to survive, uh, to prosper and to invest the time they need to invest into smart technology internet things is difficult and particularly when a lot of the examples out there are this is how airbus builds planes this is how rolls royce build jet engines well that doesn't apply to a team of 20 people in a small factory so it's very hard to yeah. relate to it when you're very busy so that engagement of uk smas which smes which are the power of our manufacturing, how they're engaged, how they get to understand how to compete. That's my biggest serious worry, particularly when I look across to mainland Europe. Yeah. Well, I know you've been a, you know, a, a regular and a, and a staunch supporter of Andrea Wilson's campaign and initiatives to, you know, get better support for SMEs. I mean, you know, there's a huge uh, sort of clamour at the moment for an industrial strategy. I think you know nearly everybody in in UK manufacturing that I that I'm reading about or talking to are in favour of of an industrial strategy. I mean, outside of that, do you think there is any other you know specific support or or maybe I don't know change of direction or clarity that UK government need to to bring to to help the sector? You know, with, with SMEs in mind. I think a change of direction and bringing clarity is probably the answer as well as the question. Um, I mean, certainly it would be nice to see political leadership of some sort engage with manufacturing. So, I mean, I've made a comment. I can think of two politicians, one of either party who have actively engaged with manufacturing. Yeah. And that's it. I would have 400 people taking an income from uh, their lifestyle. Uh, so engagement would be good. 
post games Lottie I mentioned I mean that just baffles me if I think of if the UK was a business then it's incredibly poorly led business yeah we shouldn't have postcode lotteries we've got good initiatives like made smarter UK but it's rolled out to two man- two regions of the UK so yeah. if something is good and worthwhile doing why isn't it being done well everywhere how do we address it I mean clearly corporation tax support for investment would be good I realize no government has a bottomless pocket but maybe we limit to investment in technology, investment in green energy and solutions. Uh, I'm sure there are many more educated people than me that can come up with statistics of how many pounds in equals how many pounds out, but it's yeah. got to be common sense, surely, to encourage investment. Going back to your last question, how do we get SMEs to move forward? What are the risks of the not moving forward? I think if there's tax incentives, people are motivated by tax incentives to buy that bit of mind space to think what they should be doing. Yep. Andrea does a lot of good work pulling across attention for industrial strategy, which is fantastic. I guess one of the smaller agendas that also needs ticking is education and the link between education and manufacturing. You were on Steve's radio show a couple of Fridays ago, and I mm. heard the comment being made of particularly the headmasters at these schools maybe need to be approached. I don't believe the teachers but actually maybe more so, and maybe it's a class issue, but I don't believe headmasters, headmistresses of schools understand what manufacturing can offer. Yeah. And this myth of dark satanic mills perpetuates and somehow it's got to be changed. The media aren't going to change it, but maybe the people who spend the most time with our kids, which is their teachers, yes. maybe they can be better informed. Yeah, well, well <laughs> yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I, I guess the, the only other thing I'd probably like to add to what you just said is that, personally i i feel that you know a lot of the, the 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 leadership in schools are somewhat more concerned with ofsted figures than you know than than what they're actually there to do and that's to help the kids and help them get into or onto a a career path but anyway that's that's probably a, a subject for a whole separate podcast uh without wanting to go too political on the education sector Indeed. okay well well let's talk for a, for a bit about your business then plus automation so you are the md of this business and i, I understand that you are a, a sort of main distributor for contranex sensors and in, industrial automation can you can you, do you just want to give a, a, a brief overview of of what you're involved in mark and and where your sort of niche is Okay, so we're an importer and UK representative for a couple of great sensor manufacturers. So really, we're my life is factory automation and process automation sensors. But what yep. what does that mean? Uh, sensors are the things that tell the sexy PLCs that always feature in these videos. Uh, it tells them has the thing arrived? Has the thing the PLC is told to move moved? What is the thing that's arrived? So they're very much the part of automation, which is just any machine that moves. There are sensors in it. So yep. that's our life. And we aim to help engineers make sensor sensors using uh, sensors, as you mentioned, from Contronex, which is a Swiss business, from Rear Safety, which is an Italian machine safety specialist, or Satron, which is a Finnish process automation sensor company. So a range three excellent manufacturing businesses based in Europe, which have got really good product. Yep. Um, where do we sell those? across all aspects of manufacturing. So I talked about a machine can be anything that moves. Um, our customer base is typically packaging machines. So the bread that you had was probably bagged on a machine that's got some of our sensors on. Uh, we're across food and beer. If you like Heineken beer, then it was brewed thanks to a Satron instrument. Uh, yeah. Wind turbines have got our units on. F1, but I can't say who. Uh, marine, heavy industry, if things move, we're there and yep. plus automation is about making those machines work that little bit better. Brilliant. And and what, what sort of recent trends or, or changes in, you know, sort of the wider manufacturing industry have, have sort of impacted on what you do at plus automation and, and if you, if you needed to adapt to how industry is changing to, you know, to succeed as a, as a business. Yes, um, my background has been business turnarounds and that's how I ended up here. So uh, by definition, it's turning around businesses and often that's because of changes in the market. So yeah. if we think particularly plus automation, then 
the business I first got involved with was almost exclusively automotive focused. So we diversified massively from automotive, which is painful when you think of my first half of my life was automotive. So I love it, but it didn't make sense. And the UK automotive industry obviously had a lot of challenges. So it wasn't the right place to stay coupled. We're a much more diversified business. And I think UK PLC is a much more diversified country than it once was. Yeah. Um, the challenges, I guess, for UK businesses, their small size, this massive dominance of SMEs tends to mean that few people do lots of tasks. Uh, so that can make them quite uh, limited in how much they're able to bring on change. And for us as a business, uh, it can be hard. The UK market is small. It's very complex. It's a difficult market to work within. It's the one I know. It's the one I love. And it's the one I'm at. So uh, we have to try and find a way of making it work. And I guess really in the last couple of years, particularly because of COVID, when it became much harder to get out and spend your time inside factories, we probably transitioned to push our expertise. The make sense of sense as message was come to us. We can help you. Or if we can't help you, we can direct you maybe to somebody who can. And that's probably changed things in more typically in the last few years. We've tended to win customers by helping them do something winning their trust, winning their loyalty, they've stayed with us and grown yeah. as opposed to the more traditional going out and hunting for customers and saying, hey, we're yet another sensor company. Yeah, really important. Looking after the existing customers and, and maximizing the the relationships. Okay, well, great to know that you know the, the, the business is is growing. Look into the future. Well, in fact, before we get to that, look into the future, I'm, I'm going to add something in that, that we didn't talk about when... Uh, when we discuss doing this podcast, I've got to give a quick shout out to your um, comedy prowess, actually, because your some of your posts are they 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 are inclusive of of the odd pun or two. I know you're you're very fond of uh, of puns, so uh, my 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 sort of uh, nickname for you is the pun master. Um, what what I couldn't ask for a better compliment. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I, th I think again, you know, it, like the the good news posts. I think there is a place for a bit of humour in business. We all need that sometimes, and uh, yeah. you know, so I'm always a strong advocate of of getting in a bit of a joke or a or a pun uh, where possible. So, just moving on to the the grand finale, then, Mark. Looking to the future, what are your plans for both Good Friday? good news roundup posts and and plus automation any, any exciting developments or projects on the horizon i guess the challenge with plus uh with the post if you start with the post first i try and make sure it goes out 50 maybe 51 weeks of the year i've dropped one week already this year because i just couldn't do it so yeah. uh hitting 50 this year is going to be a challenge i'd love to reinvigorate it i'd love to increase its audience because its audience is a bit static to be honest in the last couple of years yep. But the challenge is it's a hobby. Uh, it already consumes all of my Thursday night, much to the detriment of my family. Uh, so I guess I'd love any suggestions, any help in just getting it spread out there a little bit more. Maybe ask people to go back around their network and point it out to like-minded sort of supporters of UK manufacturing. But yeah. other than that, after four years, I'm probably in a pattern <laughs> it will probably continue as it is and i hope that it's well received yeah plus automation we've had this year will be another big year of growth last year was a big year of growth uh it won't continue to grow at this rate if it doesn't change so yeah we've got um really got to probably transition away from that last couple of years of winning customers who came to us by getting out there a little bit more yeah i uh, really need to get into the dairy and drinks manufacturers and the traditional automation companies and uh the challenge is getting people to hear you finding new people just buying a little bit of time with them to uh make their life a bit easier but it's hard but that'll be yeah. that's 23 24's plan really to get the growth from that uh more immediately i'm off to the sps expo smart production solutions expo in nuremberg next week okay uh i'll I'll spend a couple of days with Rhea and with Contranex. And if nothing else, I'll pick up their energy, their enthusiasm. You're talking about a show the size of the NEC, but purely dedicated to automation. And it's impossible not to come out of that 
enthused really realize how it can change the world yeah um so i'll be obnoxious for the next few months trying to convince people <laughs> i can help them change the world with automation i guess yeah absolutely well lots of lots of positive things going on and uh so any anybody that's listening that's within food and bev or the dairy industry in in need of or using sensors mark weymouth's your man to talk to about that so uh mark it's been a real pleasure uh to have this discussion on insights for manufacturing that wraps up today's show actually so i hope you've enjoyed coming on so thank you to mark weymouth from plus automation thank you for listening and look out for the next episode of insights for manufacturing see you next time and bye-bye